Hello, minions! Wheezy here with hopefully a, uh, a quick overview slash tutorial for a uh, relatively simple automated minecart loading and unloading system. The basic concept here is you've got a stack of items, uh, maybe even a large stack of items that you want to be able to dump into some central collection point and then have it feed into a minecart so that it can be transferred to a destination point unloaded and then as soon as the items are completely unloaded it will automatically return the minecart back to its original point so that you can load in more items now uh, the, the the mechanism for just loading a minecart and sending it forward is a little simpler than this but I've added a little bit of extra circuitry to this to allow bulk processing so you can dump large quantities of items into this system and uh, and it will process all of the items over a long distance until uh, everything is complete. So we'll start off with the uh, unloading side because it's the simpler circuit. And we've got a small bit of circuitry here that accounts for uh, an odd behavior that I've seen in SMP. Um, it doesn't appear to happen in single player, but in multiplayer, uh, basically there's an issue where when uh, two hoppers are loading into each other, so you got one hopper feeding into another hopper, that Sometimes the items process through so fast that the comparator output, so if you were to drop a single item in here, um, sometimes the comparator output doesn't stay on long enough uh, to go to a steady state condition as items are being processed and can cause it to flicker. Um, you may have to tinker around with it to see if this part of the circuit is necessary. If not, you can cut it out. But what this is is a, a simple one item hopper lock. So as you can see, this torch is here right now which means that this hopper is in a locked state, but once an item enters the hopper, the comparator output will kick on, hit this repeater, which is on a three tick delay on both sides, just to make sure that it reaches that steady state condition, and uh, feeds back into the hopper and unlocks it. So once one item enters, it starts processing all the items, and that basically creates at least a one item uh, throughput delay in here to get a steady state condition. Um, and what we're doing is we're using that output, right, to uh, that we're feeding into this uh, rising edge detector to trigger the minecart return system. And the way this works is um, once this starts filling up, this powers on. And what a rising edge detector, I'll go over here and show you, uh, a rising edge detector, when power is applied to it, creates a single pulse and then shuts off. So when the power is removed, there's still no output. Single pulse, and then no output. There's also a corresponding falling edge detector, which, when it's powered on, does nothing. When it's powered off, you get a single pulse. Right? So falling edge detector, rising edge detector. And a rising edge detector is pretty simple. It's just like this. You've just got the input, which can be fed into this block, a torch on this side, torch on that side, a repeater set to full delay, uh, pointing into that block, and then a line of redstone that goes from this torch to power the block that powers that torch. The falling edge detector is equally simple. Um, it uses repeater locking. So you have your input source block um, where you apply the power, a line of redstone feeding into two repeaters, the second of which has a one tick delay and feeds into this uh, repeater, which w is the one that will be locked. And then that creates the pulse. So when this powers on, you'll see that this repeater is locked. And when it's powered off, that pulse goes out. Okay, so just a brief overview of those circuits. So the idea here, when this starts processing items, then we're inverting the signal from it. So um, I did that just for the simplicity of how I was doing this. Uh, you can use a falling edge detector here if you don't invert the output from this, but I'm powering it into a block. So, you know, six of one, half a dozen of the other. But um, I'm using a rising edge detector. So here you'll see the output is on. When this is processing, this will flick to off, but since this is a rising edge detector, it won't fire again until um, this switches to uh, from off back to on again, right? So we're at the steady state condition. It'll go off when items are processing. When items are done being processed, this will send a single pulse to this powered rail, sending the cart back. Okay, so let's just real quickly, let's just see that. So we got five items here that clicks through, comes through here. When it's done, you get a single pulse out. All right. Easy peasy. Um, and that's the simple part because this will never get more items than it can process at a single time because all it will ever receive is a minecart with either a chest or a hopper in it. Um, 
I use a chest because it's not as fast as a hopper, as I mentioned for the item throughput problems earlier. Um, so your mileage may vary, but uh, I use minecart chest, and they have higher capacity. So it may be slightly slower, but uh, it's more reliable and, uh, and better capacity. So the core part of this circuit is the, uh, the, un the, the loading mechanism, I should say which is basically we've got this two hopper setup, which similar to the other side exists only so we can have this hopper pulling items out of the chest. And this hopper is locked to provide, as we mentioned before, that one item delay. So here we've got a repeater coming out uh, or a comparator coming out of here, feeding into a repeater on the full delay. And then it unlocks here. So this creates that one item delay like over there. Again, may not be necessary for your application. Um, if you're using it on SMP, uh, you will find this useful. And this other circuit here is, as you'll notice, a falling edge detector. Now this is reversed, mirrored from how I did it over there, but it is a falling edge detector. And I did this because I'm not inverting this output. And what I want to happen here is when this hopper becomes empty, right? So when it starts processing items, it will turn on. Uh, we'll just give it these five items. It'll turn on, and then when it's empty, this will generate a pulse, which sends the cart forward. Okay, so the simplest part of the system, if all you want is uh, to load a cart with a small number of items, have it run until it's empty, and then go to the destination, then this is all, all you need of the circuit, right? Is it, it does the lock for, again, that, that problem that it's addressing. And then this falling edge detector uh, is what sends the cart. Now, the reason I have this circuit here, this timer circuit, is for bulk processing, right? So if you dump in a lot of items, and as I, I, I'm setting up in my in the SMP server for Minion Craft, is I have a, a, a double chest where you can just dump all the items you want processed in the chest, um, which can be more than the capacity of a single minecart, right? So you may realize that the issue here with bulk processing is if this hopper is filled with so many items, right, that it gets... Uh, that it gets completely filled up. So say the, the the chest is full, so you have a double chest of items, and this fills up all the way, and then this hopper also fills up all the way, then this part of the circuit will never trigger, right? Because this hopper will never become empty. So if that happens, then the system becomes clogged and it will never process. So this timer is a way of um, periodically processing those items in such a way that it prevents clogging. And the concept is very simple. We have a adjustable timer circuit that is periodically sending the minecart if items are in the system. So we'll explain that real quick. It's taking the same output uh, from here, right? So the comparator output from this, um, what this says is if items are processing and it feeds into this AND gate, right? And, <clears throat> and the other part of this AND gate is the timer circuit. Okay, so if we didn't have this AND gate and we didn't have it keying off of when items are being processed, then every time this timer triggered, the cart would be sent even if no items are in it. And that is a problem, one, because it's wasteful, and two, because the way this circuit is set up, I don't have an empty cart uh, safety. So if a cart shows up here and is empty, then this circuit never triggers and a pulse is never generated here to send an item back. So that would cause the cart to, if it was empty, to end up at the destination and never return and that's bad. So the way that this system is set up, that cannot happen unless something, you know, comes over here and, you know, shoves the cart. Although in this case, it did grab some more items so it'll empty out, probably come back. Let me stop it. <clears throat> See if it's empty then it will never drain any items, this will never get triggered, and it will never come back, okay? The circuit is set up so that that won't happen. Um, so the way that we would do this timer, this is an adjustable timer circuit, and it uses the very simple principle of feeding uh, one hopper into another, so they, jo they toggle back and forth, right? And the comparator system is set up so that each one triggers the other, periodically. Um, and it's two comparators set into subtract mode, so you'll see that these are in subtract mode. Um, and they feed through into each other, basically. So you've got, you can see the circuit here, just give you a high level overview. Um, this torch and this piece of redstone are my output, so that's not a part of the circuit per se, that's just how I'm taking output. And uh, you've got the repeater 
feeding in, you know, comparator out, repeater in on both sides. So it's, you know, this is a completely symmetrical circuit. And you've got the redstone coming down off of this block and off of that block. And then this redstone here transmits the power from that block back down into the repeater. Okay, so pretty simple. And you can make a longer delay in the circuit or a shorter delay by reducing how many items are in the system, right? So if I remove all these, then there's only, what, a few items? Then this will trigger pretty rapidly. So every couple of seconds, see there? So you, this is an adjustable clock, which lets you adjust the delay on this, um, which allows you to determine how many items you want to process before the cart is sent. So the way it's set up now, um, you will have, you know, roughly um, your, your kind of high end for your timer would be double the amount of time um, that you've set in the timer, right? Because say the timer triggers just before the cart returns, then it will run through a completely full cycle, toggling from on to off and then off to back on, which creates the pulse. So um, that's your maximum. And your minimum, of course, would be if the cart shows up as that triggers, in which case it'll be sent right back, come back, process back in the system. So um, it's a self-correcting timer system. Um, but here you can see this this redstone toggles back and forth. And so we've got an inverted torch here just taking output from there. So whenever this goes through a full cycle toggling from off to back on for this side, then it will meet the condition for this AND gate, right? And it'll toggle it on. So as you can see, it triggers there. So now this is on and it'll run through a full cycle, turn back off, run through another full cycle and then turn back on. Clear enough? Good. Um, and the AND gate here says um, this is only on if both of these torches are off. So if this is outputting, uh, if this is powered on and this is powered on, then we get a power signal here. And so we've got this going into, you guessed it, a rising edge detector um, so that it doesn't just create power because the, the problem with just taking a straight output here is this rail would be on and as long as this was going through a cycle, then every time the cart came back, it would be instantly sent away. So this creates one pulse until it goes through a full cycle um, for the AND gate to the pulse generator and it sends it. And once all the items have been processed, as you can see, we've reached here, then this goes off, this shuts down. So this AND gate is never true and no matter what, this keeps running, but it doesn't get triggered until, you know, this is actually um, starting to process items again. Now, um, if the timer doesn't trigger, right, and say um, this is in the process, it's in a wait condition, you say you've got a, who knows, maybe you've got a two-minute timer set here, right? I run mine at about 30 seconds, but you can set it whatever you want to. It's, um, it's two and a half items per second is the throughput of those, so if you want you know, 10 seconds, you need 25 items. Um, but if it's in between a cycle, right, as soon as this system is empty, and this will work even with a single item, which is, which is good. Um, even if the timer doesn't trigger, once the system is empty, it will automatically cycle and process that last item. So that's why it's a fully automated system. Bulk processing takes all the items that you put into the system. You can walk away and forget it and it will transmit them to the other side no matter how many trips it takes and when it's done it will shut itself down and wait for more input. So hopefully that's uh, a system that you guys uh, will find useful. Uh, I know I have and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Talk to you later.